All right, so before we start, let me make one thing abundantly clear. I do really enjoy One Punch Man's story, but I've also been reading the manga up to the point where I'm watching in the season, so I do know where they're cutting corners or getting timing weird and stuff like that. This episode, though, and I haven't read the manga for it yet, but this episode, I really liked some of the character development. So let's talk about it. So, of course, this is the episode that picks up directly after the fight between Suryu and Saitama, which ended very abruptly when Saitama had to run away after hip-checking Suryu into a wall and technically winning the fight, but getting disqualified because he was wearing a wig. And we see Suryu picking up his, his trophy, and, of course, at this point, it's sort of, you know, established that there are monsters near the arena and that they're advised all the... The spectators are advised to stay within the arena until the police give them the all clear. And of course, Suryu is being Suryu. He's flirting with one of the, uh, I guess, cheerleaders. I don't know what she was. I guess just eye candy there. And he also is <laughs> saying that he's going to have to avoid Saitama. Like, I just don't want to see this guy again. I want to continue my life of taking it easy. However, right as we know about the monsters and right after Suryu is kind of just accepting his trophy and continuing on, we have monsters show up at the arena, actually drop into the arena, and then we have Gokutsu show up. And man, so I like his character design. I think the animation actually did a pretty good job with his character design in this as well for the anime. Better than what they did with Genesis Arms. I'll just put it that way. Let's continue. So essentially, we don't know why he showed up. Uh, and my initial thought was that he was going to show up to fight and see who is strongest to kind of enlist them as monsters and of course Snek and Lightning Max immediately go after him and get annihilated they get kicked way far out of the arena and then I learned or well we learned as the viewers that he was actually there to just enlist everybody or see who would actually want to become a monster I was thinking maybe the strongest would be coaxed into doing it but no he just wants everybody okay now we also learned that he was formerly a com competitor in this in this event and he was captured by a monster and given the choice to die or become a monster. And he he took the option to become a monster. And much like a character that we see later in this very episode, he essentially wanted to become stronger than he was. He wanted to become one of the strongest. And he, I mean, it's interesting because we get to kind of see the difference between weak-minded and strong-minded characters and what it takes to break a strong-minded character versus what it takes to coerce a weak-minded character into doing what you ask them to. So anyway, Gokutsu throws uh, a couple of the monster cells down and says, you know, eat up, become monsters, or you'll die. And so we see quite a few characters becoming monsters right away. They're just like, all right, I don't want to die, let's, let's eat this up. And it's funny because a couple of them, including the very first guy who became a monster, we see him just get annihilated, which was kind of funny to see. And oddly enough, he was taken out by Cho's. And I figured when I was watching this that Cho's was kind of of the whole, like, I'm already a perfect being. Why would I want to become, you know, why would I want to become a monster? But because of what Saitama did, it was kind of interesting because Saitama played a lot into at least his character choosing to become a monster. And it's because he figured, you know, he was already the perfect human, but then Saitama took him out in one punch. And so he kills the first guy to become a monster, and then he himself eats a cell and becomes a monster. And it's a very interesting sort of devil-like character design that, that plays off the shirt he was wearing, which is kind of funny. So it's almost like his tank top turtleneck, not tank top turtleneck thing, like went over his head and he got horns. Um... It was kind of funny, and even Gokutsu was like, oh, you didn't turn out half bad. And it's, I like the character design, but man, it's funny how Saitama's sheer strength and ability to defeat this dude played so hard into his reasoning for becoming a monster. And it's at this point, after seeing what these last two people have become from eating those cells, that all of the other contestants, or most of the other contestants, rather, start eating these monster cells because... They don't want to die. They see what happens when they become that strong or what will happen to them if they defy somebody who is that strong. And so they start eating the cells and turning into monsters left and right. And this kind of establishes which characters in this scene are 
either very mentally strong and strong-willed or very weak-willed. And it's at this point that Tsuryu takes the opportunity to ask the random girl he hit on earlier out on a date if he can manage to defeat and chase away these <laughs> these other characters. And he's just treating it like he's going to have some you know stress relief after the finals. And he actually does a pretty good job. He he annihilates quite a few of them. He he wipes them out pretty quick. Except for Cho's, who actually gives quite a hefty fight to to Suryu. And uh, he pulls so Suryu pulls his horns off. I think it happened at one point, but then his horns grow back very quickly, and he shoots a power beam that Suryu also then blocks, which I found kind of interesting. Like how how genuinely strong. Suryu actually was like he is he is a force to be reckoned with on any level human or otherwise but we see that not every otherwise category otherwise known as monsters not every single one of them has to fear him and sorry I just went back he pulled Cho's horns off after Cho's shot the beam Cho's didn't grow them back that was my mistake but anyway he defeats Cho's after quite a pretty heavy fight sequence and Again, I'm over the animation. I'll bring it up just to say I'm over it. This was not bad. It was not nearly as bad as the Metal Bat fight. Moving on. So it's at this point that Gokutsu even compliments Suryu on his sheer power and was like, it'd be a waste to, you know, become or to, to kill you. Why don't you become a monster like the rest of us? And Suryu's saying, like, you know, well, you know, if you're saying it's gonna be, you know, easy, life life will be even easier in this case, sure. No, not really. He throws it at uh, Gokutsu and says, I'm never going to do that because I don't want to be as ugly as you. It's it's that his his mean or his reason for not becoming a monster is literally that shallow. He he tells Saitama that his thoughts on uh, on martial arts are shallow, but his reasoning for not becoming a strong monster is because he doesn't want to be ugly. I'm hoping that in reality there are other reasons to it, but yeah, that was his reasoning that he gave Gokutsu is I don't want to be that ugly. So then he goes after Gokutsu, and he just punches Suryu straight to the ground, quite, quite epically. Like actually, really soundly, beats the ever-loving crap out of Suryu. And it's at this point, halfway through the action in the arena, that we get back to Garo and Watchdog Man. And we see that Watchdog Man is extremely powerful. He destroyed all the monsters that showed up. He was literally sitting on top of them. They were all destroyed. He took them out, apparently, in almost no time flat. And at the point that Garo goes to attack Watchdog Man, he jumps out of the way and just gets ready to fight. And it's funny because he is so... Watchdog Man is so fast. Like... Garo is going after him with his full ability of, you know, the the crushing rock, flowing water, whatever. And he's just pulling him away. Just pulling him away. Watchdog Man is just blocking everything. It, it's it's pretty wild to see how capable Watchdog Man actually is. I mean, it kind of makes sense. He is one of the top ranking heroes in S class, so I, I just wanted to see what the what the action would actually entail, and it entails quite a quite an epic fight. I was I was very happy with that. It's at this point after we see Garo going against Watchdog Man that we get back into the main fight with Gokutsu and all the other monsters in the arena, and we see this interesting fighting quirk with Gokutsu where he essentially every time he knocks somebody down he says, Stand up, I'll give you three seconds and if they don't, then he will do something to brutally injure them. And he does that several times with Suryu, and Suryu gets up each time, even after his arm gets broken, and he's taking a ton of damage. Like, more damage even than what we had with Saitama attacking him, which shows that Saitama clearly wasn't at all going all out. And at the point where Suryu goes to use his strongest attack on this guy, he catches it and just flicks him, like just flicks him in the face, and that's all it takes to just brutalize poor Suryu. And after Gokutsu's done beating the crap out of Suryu, he drops him and leaves him to the other crow monster things that were his peers, Gokutsu's peers who lost their minds or lost their sense of self, and they're attacking. And we see Bakuzan, I think was his name, and how he's just kind of standing off to the side watching, and finally we see what is going on in his head, which is that even against monsters, he sees that Suryu is no match. So he decides, in his infinite wisdom, to eat all of the monster cells, and 
his body kind of gives out and he collapses. And uh, that was all I thought that was. He just collapsed after eating all the monster cells. Even Goku's just like, you actually ate them all. All right, well, your body's not going to give, or your body's not going to hold up. So I thought he was dead, just straight up. And then as Suryu is starting to kind of realize the situation he's in more and more and become more and more distressed and more and more damaged by these crow monsters, Snek and Lightning Max show back up. Heroes, they show back up. And they start fighting to, to win. They start fighting to save everybody in the arena. It doesn't matter what rank you are. It doesn't matter. You're a hero. You need to fight to win. And I'll get more into this in a minute with the whole hero mentality and the way that these characters act and stuff because there's a lot more to it. And I'm going to kind of cover that right at the end of this kind of breakdown section. So after they defeat the crow monsters, we have this moment where Suryu is planning to run. He says, my legs are still good. I'm going to leave. But yet the two heroes stay to fight. And this ends up working to their detriment because they get annihilated because Bakuzan comes back as a giant monster. He's, I think, a threat level demon, I think is what it was, or something like that. And he he's imposing and, and intimidating. And of course, we see this as a moment where Suryu thinks that he's going to be able to escape. He can make it. He'll live. He can, he can continue and he can survive. And it's taken away from him immediately once once this monster shows up and knocks him back into the arena and just brutalizes him. And of course, Bakuzan, the monster now, thinks he's all that and goes after Gokutsu saying, you can't order me around. And, well, <laughs> Gokutsu pretty much puts him in his place immediately, scaring the daylights out of him with the power that he harnesses. And so because of that, he's um, Bakuzan's basically just like, I'm, I'm done being the strongest. Like, he... He realized he wasn't the strongest human, so he wanted to become the strongest monster. After seeing the power level that Gokutsu was kicking out, he just doesn't want to be the strongest of anything anymore. He's okay with what he is, as is, and then continues to wail on Suryu because he always liked beating on people who were weaker than him. And it's at this point in the episode that we see Suryu's mentality change about how, how he sees heroes, because he always saw heroes as people getting in his way. But in the moment where he is the most helpless is the moment that he calls for heroes and it's interesting to see and this is where i'll get into why i think this episode was actually really interesting in my opinion was because after everything he said about his mentality on heroes we see him realize the moment where heroes are necessary and it's the moment where you are the least useful the the most helpless is when you need a hero to arrive because even as strong as Suryu is, there is a moment that he comes to where he needs help. He needs saving, and that's what heroes are for. And he finally realizes this in, like, the last, what he thinks is, the last moment of his life. <laughs> because he had never needed any any help. He literally became strong to pass through life easily, and in the point, at the point where he realizes that he can't do anything and he's helpless is when he realizes why heroes are needed. And it's at this very moment when he realizes that, and he's calling out for somebody to help. He's calling out that somebody, please, Snick, Lightning Max, somebody, get up. It's at this moment, and actually at a point where Bakuzan is ready to just stomp out that last little bit of hope that he has, that Saitama shows up. And it ends with Saitama walking towards, oddly animated, kind of threw me out of the episode a little bit, but Saitama, walking towards Bakuzan, prepping for the fight. And I cannot wait to see the fight between Bakuzan and Saitama, and I can't wait for the fight between Gokutsu and Saitama. That is going to be so awesome, and I really can't wait for it. Overall, this episode does a really good job of actually giving you sort of the perspective of somebody who is extremely strong, who has never needed any help with anything. He's never needed to be saved. He's always been powerful enough to handle things on his own. We see this very rushed, but not rushed in a bad way, very, very quickly progressed character arc of someone who never needed a hero, didn't like heroes because he thought they were unnecessary and got in his way, coming around to realizing why heroes are needed in the most brutal and just awful way possible. Suryu goes from being so strong that he never even needed to think about heroes apart from just being a nuisance to relying and desperately crying out for the assistance of a hero because he is now at a point where he can't help himself. And I love that. I love 
one's ability to take a powerful character and limit them in a way that makes them feel more relatable and makes them feel like a, well, in Sirius' case, a redemption, like a redeemed character, because originally he's just not a great character. He was irritating, he was cocky, he was just not cool. And now he's relatable because he's been at a point where he knows that he can't do anything. And I love that about the way that one writes the characters. So overall, I think this episode was pretty good. Here in their animation, last time I'll mention it, here in their animation, the Saitama walking up was kind of weirdly animated, but I'm hoping that the actual like moment where we see him fight will be better. I don't know. I haven't read there yet, so we'll see. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of breakdown and review. I definitely liked the way this episode was written just because of how how much it actually kind of redeemed Suryu as a character for me. And maybe you guys enjoyed it too. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe. As always, this is how I, you know, can do what I do. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to check out any other videos. A couple of links in the description. Um, yeah, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you want to follow me. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Make sure to be there and have a good one.